G'day guys, welcome back. It's snail time again. I'm going to use this big snail mold from Let's Resin. I've done one uh, recently. Uh, I will link it up in the top right hand corner of the video towards the end if you want to watch it. <laughs> now today, look, <laughs> I'm going to put this in the snail in the back. <laughs> it's, um, it's just a little, I don't even know what it's called, a little fuzzy ball string ball thing I don't I seriously don't even know what it's called um it's kind of rainbow it's got red if you look at it that way red orange yellow green indigo violet so I'm going to I've cleaned my snail out ready to go I'm going to try and tuck it in under there hopefully so that we can still see all the all the colors I want to see the red I want to see the the purple so Hopefully that's, is that about right? One, two, just trying to see which one's the center. Um, so, um, I've mixed up my river table resin and I did 100 grams of A and 43 grams of B. And I went and put it in my vacuum chamber that the lovely Des from DIY composites from who sends me platinum resin um, has sent me so thank you Des right so I've done I've just thought I'll take out the bubbles first so I'm really new to this I will do a video later on like how to use this because I'm still learning so I've done it once now I'm going to release there's the um the vacuum right at the very end there at the fullest the highest so I'm going to release the pressure now slowly and I'm just going to do it one more time because I thought it didn't look as if it had a lot of bubbles in it really but then after I've done this it, I saw a whole heap of bubbles come out so look it's nice and clear now so we'll release that And then close it again. Like I said, I'm still learning, still learning. Close that. Then we go over here. And there's a, a switch. Switch it on. And then that climbs again. And we want it to go all the way around to there. Takes a little while. Or you can actually see any bubbles start but my resin was really clear to begin with so I was really surprised on how much bubble edge came out but then I'm thinking well you know I'm gonna tip this resin in and then I'm gonna put the spiky ball in and I'm probably gonna get more bubbles so I don't know we'll just see I may I, I may, if I do get lots of bubbles I'll just pick the snail up and put it back in here I can because I can do that now so round we go. Once it gets up to the minus one there or minus thirty, then I'll turn it off. Oops, I'm trying to see get get a bit closer. Whoa, things in the way. Things in the way. I'm just gonna leave it there for a, a minute while I check the front little gauge it's not on there yet there's some bubbles coming up but look there's not many left in there because I've already done this once but I just thought oh I'll just I'll start the video it's almost on almost at negative one now are there any more bubbles yet yeah, look there's a few coming up for sure there's there's a few more not nearly as much as it was before. I'm just going to wait till it's right on the minus one. And then it'll hold the vacuum. Alright, so I'm going to turn that off now. I'm going to flick that switch at the back of the compressor. 
The unit came with the chamber and the compressor and everything you need. It actually even came with oil for the compressor, although it had leaked. <laughs> and I had to go to Bunnings and buy, well, husband, Dave, thank you, Dave, went to um, Bunnings and got some more oil. That one. So we just filled it back up. I don't know if anyone's interested in this or not. Like you could fast forward until we get to the interesting bits on the snail, but I thought I'll show you anyway. So they are popping, but once I start relieve, uh, releasing the vacuum again, they will all vanish. So we'll just release this again, slowly. And once the air gets in there, those bubbles will pop. So, and then I'm going to use it. I'm going to use that resin. Um, as far as I know, Des from Platinum does sell these. They're quite, quite well priced. Um, this is the three three gallon three three something <laughs> oh, I can't remember it's a 20 liter it's a 20 liter all right I'm gonna put you back on the tripod actually let's see if I can do this see now that the pressures or the vacuum is released it's really quite thick actually it's like double glass a double thick glass A bubble in that wow all right let's go back over came with that little mat down there we'll go back over to the tripod so if you want one of those vacuum chambers um, you can head on over to DIY composites who sell the platinum and check out their website if it's not there just message them I haven't actually looked to see if there's an actual listing for it because they just sent it to me for, to try out. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm kind of worried though, as soon as I start pouring, we're just gonna get a multitude of bubbles because of the, um, the spiky ball. But that, that's okay, that's okay. Like I said, I can always pop it back in the vacuum chamber. So I'm just gonna pour here against the side of the snail so you try and pour like onto a side of something so that it's not like splashing down onto the uh, onto the resin and making more bubbles. You sort of try to try to pour it onto the side of your mold if you can. It's going to be really hard to actually see if there's any bubbles in there because you can't see through the side. And I am going to have to tip it and tilt it like I did with the other video because if you don't do that, you're not going to. Um, get resin in the full shell. You're only going to get like three quarters of the shell um, covered in resin. And if you've tried this snail before, you'll know what I mean. I might even need more resin actually because last time, oh, that's right, because last time I did it, um, I had all those baubles, you know, those balls that I put in there. Um, okay, so down here is the area, see how high that is and see how low this is down here, it's a big difference. So you need to tip your snail. So basically what I need, I need to get the resin to go that way and that way. So I tip it, I just put, this is just my puffy heart mold. So I'm going to tip it there and then I'm going to use four pop sticks to tip that way and I don't have enough resin I just I looked up on my video to see how much I made last time and it was a hundred grams of A and 43 grams of B but like I said I had all those balls in there that was displacing the volume of the resin so I'm gonna have to mix up some more don't go anywhere I'll be right back. Right, I've made up another 
50 grams of A and 22 grams of B. Um, I can see just a couple of little tiny bubbles in there. And look, while I've got the vacuum chamber, look, why not use it? So we'll go over, we'll pop it in, and I'll put it in, I'll put my other resin in as well. That's the one that I've just made up. There it is. You can see there's some bubbles in there. So we'll pop that in there as well, next to each other. And put the lid on. Let's see if I can do this all one-handed, hey? <laughs> Is that on properly? It just sits on top with this one. It just it just kind of sits there on top and balances. So feel that it's the right way around. Okay, so that's it. Um, actually, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna close that, don't I? I've gotta close that. That's the releases the, that opens it up, like releases the vacuum, lets the air in. And then this one, gosh, I can't remember. I'm still learning, I'm still learning. My husband's been doing it for me. Let's flick that on. Okay, <laughs> that's working. All right, so that's gotta go point left. That one's pointing up. Okay, yeah, Dave's been um, Dave's been playing with this. Um, he's he's really good at it. So I said to him, "You're going to have to come and show everyone on YouTube how to use these things." But I was watching him, you see, and I've I've learned <laughs> I've learned how to use it. So I'm going to have a go, and we'll we'll do it together, okay? But if you want to. A video on exactly how to to use it although you're seeing it now anyway let me know all right so the gauge is coming up to minus eight point eight I'm reading the red numbers on the inside so they usually don't start getting bubbles till they're about that Oh look, there's a bubble in the snail come out. See the bottom left there? There's a bubble in the snail. I'm just going to leave the camera there for a, a minute while I look at the gauge. You don't get the full amount of bubbles to come up until it, it really hits the maximum on the gauge for that vacuum. But you can see there on the bottom left of the snail. So there's... Oh, there's another one! Oh, oh gosh! And then look at the resin. See on the right? Look at the bubbles coming up from there as well. Look at that. Look at the snail go. Uh, so it's not quite at the minus one yet. Another, another few seconds. Now you have to watch these. Oh my gosh. <gasps> look at the bubbles. And I thought it was bubble free. All right, now I'm going to turn off the little switch on the back of the compressor. <gasps> I told you that was going to happen as soon as I put that little ball in. It was going to be bubble city. Oh no, resin, don't run in there. Don't run in there. Don't run down the... Oh gosh. I'm tipping it now. This is the only, this is the only thing you see. You can't, in well, my very limited experience, you really can't have a full um, piece. Because, because of the bubbles, they just go over. Now those bubbles have probably gone down into the antenna. Eye stalks, they're eye stalks. They're not antenna at all, they are eye stalks. I did not know that. So I'm just tipping the whole chamber, trying to get the resin not to run down those. So at this stage, you could leave this and just walk away for 10 minutes or something and, and let those bubbles keep coming up and popping. Um, or you can open the chamber and let some air in and the bubbles will all go and then I would do it again Let's release And watch Let's see the bubbles go. They'll pop as soon as the oxygen you know, hits them they'll pop I guess kind of like what a torch does, I don't know. Alright, I'm going to go again. I'm going to close that. I'm going to flick on the button on the back of the compressor. 
and we're going to go again. I'll catch up with you after I've done this. So if you wanted to, you could stop, like if you think, oh, it's getting really high and it's going to overflow, you can stop whenever you want to. Um, just turn off the, the motor on the compressor, just turn that off. You don't have to go all the way to the minus one. It just means that you're going to have to do it more often if you're only getting half the amount of bubbles out with each time. But I'm hoping I got most of them out the first time, so hopefully we won't have to do too many the second time here. If you're not interested in this, please fast forward. I won't be offended. I just thought it was interesting because I've never done, never used a compressor before in the vacuum chamber. Now I'm just going to tip this. Oops. Actually, I'm just going to... It's on... Um, it's nearly, nearly there. I'm just going to wait till it gets to the that big red line there, and then I'm going to turn it off but I do want to oops figure out where the machine is <laughs> I'm getting it in the film right, I'm going to turn it off because I need my other hand to tip to tip the chamber so lots more bubbles again Alright, so I'm probably going to do this another couple of times. You may have to do it five, six times depending on what you're doing. But because it's got the little stringy ball in there, you know, I knew it was going to trap bubbles, but I was waiting for my vacuum chamber to arrive before I used this ball. Alright, I'm going to release again. Don't do it too fast, you could crack the glass. My other resin in the cup, I think, is perfect. So it's fine in there. Um, I'm going to go one more time, but I will catch up with you when I'm done and I'm back at the table. Okay? There we go. Right, so I did it uh, another couple of times in the compressor, vacuum chamber, whatever you want to call it. Um, I can still see like a couple of tiny little bubbles around the edges. I don't know that I'll ever get them all out. I'm not going to be too worried about it. Let's just move on. Now, <laughs> I was, um, I thought I'll get one of these and just see if I can clean out the resin in the little eye stalks. Uh, nope. They are full of resin. So we're having clear eye stalks. And then like I can colour them with, I don't know, I can choose a colour and just colour the tops. So the body will be clear, the eye stalks will be clear, and uh, then I'm going to dust some of this over the the foot. It's called a foot, not the slippery thing that the slide, the snail slides on. It's called a foot. I did not know that. Somebody told me that. Still see a couple of little bubbles. Look, it's, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be much better than what it would be if I didn't use the um, vacuum chamber. All right, so here we go. I'm going to pour the rest in. And hopefully, I might have to tip it a little bit more. We'll see what happens. It is quite lopsided, that, that shell. Like, you know, whoever designed it, it would have been much easier if it, was flat but I wanted I guess they wanted to make it look a bit more designer or something so it needs another stick there's five there do you want to see do you want to see what I'm doing I'll bring it down so you can see there's a couple of little bubbles hiding under there still I can't put it back in the chamber now because it's so full. If I lay it flat, it'll just all overflow. But I will, I'll just scoop those out later. But there's a little bit of a gap still there. 
So this is what it's looking like. It's on an angle like that, so that the resin falls that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, we'll pour a bit more in. And now the resin's starting to climb up into this section here, but it hasn't gone all the way over there yet. So I'm going to get another stick. That's six. You've got to be careful here. You don't want everything tipping over. You've got to be very careful. Be gentle. And then I don't want it going more this way either. Lakshmi, I don't think it's got... See, this is filling up this bit here. It's got resin in it now. I think I don't think I'm going to be able to put any more in, you know. I think that's going to be it. I think that'll be it. So uh, once this is cured, and because it's the river resin, it's going to take 24 hours. So I'm not going to be able to do any more now. I'll have to wait for that to cure up, um, and then you go down there. <laughs> I may have to just keep, you know, every every hour, I guess, come back and just sort of poke it down because it's going to want to float up to the top. Give it a quick little, you could give it a burst with the alcohol as well. I'll see if I can get the alcohol to go in down there as well. That should help. Um, and then also just try and dislodge them a little bit. But those ones that were there before have gone now. All right, well, that's me done for now. I'm going to have a coffee. Dave's calling me. Coffee time. So um, I'll see you tomorrow. I will have to clean up there where my little bit of there's some resin in there i'll have to just wipe that off because i'm going to dust later on this the foot area all right sorry it was so long i uh, kind of well i hope that you found it a little bit interesting for those of you that are wondering about pressure pots i was scared of them i was i thought oh, I, they're huge and they're cumbersome and i don't know how to use it and so i'll put it off and put it off and then finally i said Des, have you got any? Do you sell them? He said, yes, I'll send you one. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Let this cure. See you tomorrow. Right, so it's the next day. I've taken away all my... <laughs> pieces. I've written a snail on it so, so that I remember next time that's how high it needs to be on the side like that so I can use it again. All right. Now, um, what I ended up doing was... I felt around in there for those little eye stalks and I got my little pliers and I pulled these out <laughs> uh, and they're perfectly formed but I decided I would rather have them the same color as this bottom area so there they are I am going to hang on to those um, in case <laughs> you know next time I do a snail and these break off then I'll go ah here's one I prepared earlier and I can stick them back on so I'll try and remember to keep them. Now, uh, this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a combination of aqua blue and purple. Only because I want to kind of keep that rainbow kind of feel going on. Uh, these are by Let's Resin and they are holographic glitter. Oh my gosh. These next level these are my new favorite things in the world I've used them a few times now um, I don't know that I've actually videoed oh I might have but I've been making all kinds of little pendants and things you know with my leftover resin oh, they're just to die for so like I said my new favorite things now I was just going to use the purple um, but I'm going to kind of do a little bit of blending and just kind of get a bit more of that rainbowish kind of look going so here we go look at that so I'm just going to kind of it's going to kind of blend both colors you know I'll do a little blotch of purple here and there and then I'll do like a little blotch of the blue or aqua somewhere else and just kind of blend them in a little bit and it looked really pretty when I did that with my <clears throat> with my pendants that I was doing. Um, you know, I had a little bit of leftover resin, so I chucked it in my pendants, and yeah, I thought it looked really pretty. So that's 
what I'm going to do. Now there's a tiny little bit in there which I couldn't get to. Like even though I tipped and tipped, I just could not get um, the resin to go all the way down there. So in that shell, so there'll be a little bit of shell which won't have clear on it, but it's actually underneath, like it's at the bottom. So when you look at it from the side, you, you don't actually notice that, hey, there's a little bit of shell that hasn't got anything on it. You know what I mean? You won't notice it. Well, I didn't anyway. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do, um, now you see that? See that there? That's a little bit of resin that I've dripped, and you can... You can see those little blobs that haven't got any dust on them. So just go in and pick them off. They show up quite easily and you can see that it actually it doesn't have any dust on it, any holographic, so that you can just go and scrape that little bit of resin off. Because, you know, when you clean up your moulds from previous use, sometimes you don't always, you know, catch every last little piece. But when you're doing this, you can see where you've missed and you can just pick it off. I'll just scrape it with my nail. Right, so as I was saying, I do tend to get sidetracked. As I was saying, um, I do want to get some of this colour down into those little eye eye stalks so I'm gonna it's gonna be a bit tricky actually but I'm gonna see if I can just push my little paintbrush down there and see if I can carefully paint the sides I'm gonna just use the the purple I'll put quite a lot down there and then just sort of see if I can spread it around it's a bit tricky because you can't get in there properly, you know. But anyway, I'll do the best I can. And you can't see from the other side if you're getting in there or not. So we'll just have to hope the best. Pray to the resin gods. And hope for the best. I will go in there with my bigger brush as well because it's not very big on the end there. So I will, I will go in afterwards with my bigger one. So basically just... Going in here, getting my two colours done, doesn't matter if one colour goes over the other, you're not going to see it, and I am going to pour black in. Now it's not poke down there with my big brush poke down there with my big brush and now it's a bit tricky to get in there because you've got to get in there as well so make sure that you're getting in there it's going to do one color uh, is that there? oh that's the bottom anyway <laughs> to the bottom of the snail it's his chin So the first colour that touches the mould is the colour that's going to be dominant, is the colour that you're going to see. So put whatever colour you want to be the dominant one. I think that's about it. Alright, I think that's it. I'm going to just take this over to my rubbish bin and give it a bit of a a blow to get all that loose stuff out. Um, oh gosh, <laughs> they're a bit messy. I get it everywhere, but seriously, I am in love with these. Um, I will link not these particular products, but I will add Let's Resins link down below. If you use that link for anything in the store, whatever it is, you'll get ten percent discount. Okay, and I will get a small little kickback from it <laughs> so yeah um, I'm just gonna go and blow this I'll be right back
Now I've just brought you over to the other side of the room here where you can see all the colour, all the shimmer, look at it. It is just to die for. Look at that. So I'm hoping that once I've filled it up with black, that's what we're going to see. All right, I'll get you back up on the stand now. I have got the Platinum 360 Plus resin. If I use the River resin, it's going to take another 24 hours to cure before I can unmold it, at least. If I use the Platinum 360 Plus, I can't pour the full height. It's too deep, so I'll split it into two. Um, I'll be able to do the next layer in about three hours, which means I can do the second layer tonight and have this piece done and dusted. Now, I'm going to see if I can... Actually, I'll do what I did last time and just pour from here and let that resin just run down into the little eye stalks. If I can give them a bit of a a bit of a pinch. They're here. Pinch, 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 pinch. And hopefully <laughs> get some resin to go down into them. Alright, so just pour slowly, let the resin go where the resin wants to go. So this is 75 grams of A and 32 grams of B, although I probably didn't need that. I was going to do 50 grams and 22 grams and I thought and I thought that wasn't going to be enough, but it's more than enough. I'm going to have to do something else with it. I don't, I don't want to fill it anymore. It'll flash cure and then I run the risk of the resin sticking to my mould and, you know, you don't want to do that. It was an expensive mould. Well, not too expensive, but I did buy it myself and I don't want to have it ruined. I added the black, midnight black pigment paste from Lorez. Um, so that's basically all I'm going to do. I'm going to give these another little pinch. I can see the little black balls at the end because they're wider, but then they get narrower. So I can't actually see the black going up further, but I can see those little balls. Okay, um, okay, so this is where we'd come we get our little puffy heart. I'm not gonna waste the black. I'll get out that gorgeous. I'm gonna have to get some more of these because <laughs> I'm gonna use them all. <laughs> I'm gonna use them all way too fast. Alright, let's do this. Can you see? Move you out of the way, snail. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a little bit of blue, a little bit of pink, a little bit of blue. Swirl them all around. Although whatever colour touches the mould first, that's what colour is going to be showing. So it doesn't really matter if I blend them because it's the colour that touches first is what you're going to get. I should have enough to do two, so let's do two. Get it in there, however, however you want. I wonder what would happen if you actually mix two of these colours together and then dusted. I wonder, I wonder. Uh, look at that. See, I've got some wastage there. I shouldn't slap it on so fast, should I? Okay. Now, if I had a bit of paper or something... I wonder if I can save it. No, <laughs> there's not enough to save. It was a good thought. All right, what do you reckon? Okay, so um, I'm just going to pull my black in. I cannot begin to tell you how in love I am with these holographic glitters. Like, I didn't think I would be. I, Seriously, I didn't think I would be one to go mad. 
go gaga over holographic glitters, but they are just next level. I wonder if I can get another one in. Alright, I might do another one. Anyway, I'll come back with I'll come back to you when this is cured enough for me to put the second layer on. It doesn't have to be totally set, it just has to be cured enough that um, you know it doesn't feel hot and um, yeah, the colour's not gonna drop down. So see you soon. This has set now. These have all set, and I have got another 50 grams of A and 22 grams of B. And we'll just pop that in. Bring it right up to the top. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that come up faster than I expected. All right. So that's it. <laughs> I know, it wasn't terribly exciting, was it? I'll see if I can put a little bit more in. I just want it to be doming a little bit because when the resin sets up or cures, it shrinks away from the sides and you end up with that sort of a little lip on the outside. So try and get as much in as I can. And I look for a little, when the lights are shining on it, I look for a, a line of light across the back. I know it sounds a bit odd, but when I see that line of light shining along the back, I know that it's domed and then I know to leave it. So anyway, that's it. It's it's late. It's time for bed. I just wanted to get this done before I went to bed. And um, we will demold in the morning and cross fingers that the eye stalks don't break again. I don't think I've seen anyone do it successfully without them breaking. So hopefully tomorrow. Wish me luck. It's the next day. I'm going to move these out of the way and we'll start working on this guy. Now, I am not going to even try to demold him without my isopropyl alcohol this time. That's it there. It's one, this one's 100% um, alcohol. If you can get one that's, you know, as high in alcohol as you can, I'm going to squirt. Because it's it goes in like that it's it's difficult to unmold but we try and squirt all the way around if we can now don't peek it's a bit hard to get the alcohol to go all the way down because of the shape <laughs> but we'll try okay i think that was probably the easiest I guess this is for pulling on. I don't know, really, because there's another one there. All right, let's just loosen that. Now, you've got to be really, really careful as well because these edges are really sharp and uh, you can easily cut yourself, so just be careful. I'm just trying to... Oh, gosh, it, it is a struggle, this mold. I must say, it is a struggle. Just have to open that enough to get some of that alcohol down there. And then, of course, your fingers are slippery and it doesn't make it any easier. What I need is two people. One to hold. If you're doing this, try and get a second person to help you. So one person can, you know, pull the sides away. This one's really, this is where the big shell is. This one, so this one's really difficult to, ah, there we go, get a hold of. As soon as you've got it released, the mold released from your resin all the way around and got alcohol in there, try and do a couple of sprays if you can. I'm a bit worried about, well, I'm a lot worried about the eye stalks this time as well because I broke them last time. But although that wasn't the fault of demolding, that was just the fault of me putting little balls down there when I probably shouldn't. Right, so I'm going to go around twice, as you can see, trying to put as much alcohol in there as I can. It might help if I turn the spray towards the mould and not towards myself. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see if we can do this now, hey? Hopefully it'll be a bit easier than last time. Now the other thing, because the um, stalks are down here, try not to put too much pressure, like when you're holding it like that, try not to put too much pressure, pressure on those eye stalks because that can make them 
full uh, break as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push from the back. Oh, ah, I did it! <laughs> All right, now, see that, was, that wasn't too bad, you guys, that wasn't too bad. Now let's ease, ease these little eye stalks out, hey? We can put some alcohol up there as well. Probably won't make much difference. <gasps> Look at the shine! All right, concentrate, Julie, concentrate. Here we go. Ease it out. Ease it out. <gasps> We're out! <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm going to stand on my little step. All right, I'm on my step. Oh, we're ready. All right, we'll have a look over here first. Oh, look at that. Look at that color. Now, because I sort of dabbed it on nilly willy, nilly willy, no, willy nilly. <laughs> I've got like different shades. Anyway, all right, here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, look at that. Uh, what's that? A little bit of silicone. I hope it didn't come off my shell. It's more like, feels like a glue. Oh my gosh, you guys, look. Oh wow. So you can see a little bit of the black on the bottom there. I was debating whether or not to put clear in here. Um, Again, in hindsight, it probably would have been a good idea to put the clear in there. See, that's where that little bit of the shell, I just couldn't get the resin to go in there. But this is the this is the right side. So when you're looking at, at it like that, you can't really <clears throat> can't really see that we've got a little bit here missed, just because I couldn't tilt the mold anymore. But like I said, it's on the it's on the like it's way on the bottom there, so you don't really notice it. <laughs> what do you think? I can see the purple, I can see the blue, I can see the green, I can see the yellow, orange, and red. So, yay! <laughs> so I got them, got them so that we could see them all. <clears throat> Hindsight. Hindsight. Actually, you know what? Looking at this little piece here and this piece here, if I had done, and hindsight's a wonderful thing, I'll keep telling you that. If I had done <clears throat> clear in this and in this, and just not, like, dusted the, the foot area of the snail and not dusted the inside of the shell there, when I had, when I poured the clear for this, you wouldn't see that. Like, that wouldn't be... Um, same color as that that would just be clear same as on this side I dusted this little bit um, you know with the with the powder um, if I hadn't you would have seen black there <clears throat> but what I'm trying to get at is if I had just filled this area with clear after dusting it you still would have seen this holographic effect it wouldn't be as bright but you still would have seen it but this bit here would have been clear and that bit under there would have been clear. So it's kind of a toss-up. Depends what you like. And also when you're looking at it, you wouldn't see black down there. So does that mean we have to do it again <laughs> with clear? So you don't know these things until you do them. But, um, yeah, oh, I love it. And you can see how, the, see how the, the blue and the purple on the ends there, they're picking up the blue and the purple in, in the actual snail itself. And I'm so happy that I got my little eye stalks done. Probably could have had a little bit more of the holographic powder in them. You can see a little bit of the black poking through there, but that's fine. I can I can handle it. I can handle it. So there it is. There it is. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Now, do we want to enhance the swirl? Um, I, I think not this time, you know, because there's so much going on in there, like that ball. I'll show you my packet of balls. Do you want to see my balls? Here's my balls. So this one is uh, red, green, and blue. That one's 
green, blue and yellow. And that one is yellow, red, purple. Um, that one's like multi with some oranges in it. This one's the same as what I used. It's the rainbow one. So there's a few different sort of color combinations in there. Um, and I got them all from eBay. That's not much help, is it? I'll see if I can find the, the link if anybody wants to use one of these in the snail. But look, I'm feeling as if I need to do another one um, and not put the black in. And then would actually see clear right through to the base. Oh, I'm looking. I've even forgot that we're supposed to be looking for bubbles. Not a bubble in sight, you guys. Not a bubble to be seen. <gasps> Yay. Oh, okay. Well, 99% happy with this one. I've got no bubbles. I've got the eye stalks. I've got a gorgeous holographic purpley bluey color to match the rainbow in there. Um, the only thing that I would say I would do next time is not put black in here. I would go with clear. So does anyone mind if I do it again? And we can we can choose a different color. We can choose, um, although I do like that one. We can choose a different color. And then I've also got these little ones. <coughs> Isn't it, these aren't so long. Like these ones are really long, like I don't know what you call those bristly things. These are only short ones. Um, wow, I'm dropping them everywhere. Um, I'm actually going to put these in some frogs. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. And there's a few different. Well, there's only three three colours. There's three colours. I think. Yeah. Uh, no, there's four. There's another one. There's another one. I've been using these in in other projects, but um, so there we go. Uh, I will see if I can find the link for these bigger balls. Oh, I nearly forgot the puffy hearts. <gasps> I can't forget the puffy hearts. You wait over there for a minute, snail. All right, here we go. Let's get them out. Now, I'll be just I'll be giving these as gifts when people buy a few of my molds at once. They just I think oh, thank you so much for purchasing my molds, and um, I give them a little gift. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Aren't they beautiful? They are so gorgeous. There's the shape of them. For those of you that haven't seen them before. They're a good size, make a nice size pendant. And all you gotta do is hook your, your chain or your piece of leather or whatever it is you're using. So they're all gonna be very similar because I used the same technique, I just sort of dabbed on the, the purple and the blue but yeah I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to get myself some more of these glitters because I can see myself running out very fast let's resin make sure you've stocked up these are gonna fly out the door they are amazing all right so there we go <clears throat> there's my hearts there's my snail let's go down for a bit of a close-up shall we and uh, then I will Put her on some better light. Let's see if I can get a better shot. Always looks so dark down here. I don't know why. Always looks so dark. <laughs> I've got all these bright lights on. It still looks dark. All right, so I've just brought her over to the other side of the room and popped her on my bench in front of the window so that we can see what she looks like in the sunlight. Look at that. Hello. <laughs> I should paint a little mouth on it. <laughs> so that's the back, or well, the other side anyway, of the snail. Sally snail. So yeah, definitely when I, if I use this, these stringy balls again um, definitely I think just have the clear so that you're not seeing that that black on the bottom there but I don't know you lo let me know do you think the black looks all right or do you think it would have been better just clear so that you could basically see down into the base um, so whatever you put the snail on um, you'd be able to like see right through it 
So that's that's a different way of doing it, I guess. But let me know what you think. If you like the black like that, or would it have been better clear? Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed my little video. And I will see you again real soon for the next one. Okay, take care. Bye for now.